Good morning, boys and girls. How are you guys feeling today? Yeah. I just want to reenact that. It was, it was so much conviction in what he said. I'm just as excited as you guys <laughs> to see MC Jin. So let's welcome. I don't even think I've seen someone that convincing. Thanks. Your excitement just exudes off of your whole being. So um, let's see. Uh, I want to start out with a disclaimer. And that is, I'm privileged and very honored to be the first speaker of today, but I do want to clarify the sole purpose and the reasoning behind that is one simple factor. They wanted to start off with something that had the least educational value. <laughs> and that way we can only go up from here, all right? <laughs> so uh, he mentioned the whole you know, journey, and I'll be able to elaborate on that in the next uh, 17 minutes and 30 seconds, so that's awesome. But uh, spontaneity has been a big part of my journey, and I just realized it in the last you know, three minutes. Uh, from the moment that I decided I wanted to pursue this rap thing, it's been a spontaneous adventure, right? Every moment. And I figured, what better way to express that spontaneity than start off with a freestyle right now? Is that cool? So let me set the tone first. BC notes. Okay. What I'm going to rap about and what I'm going to talk about has nothing to do with the Great Wall. I just love this picture. <laughs> so, um, in order to really enhance this spontaneous, I was going to say combustion, that could happen too. The only way to enhance this spontaneous moment right now is I need some assistance from you guys. Put your hands up or you can scream it out. I just need some random words. The more random, the better. It could be a word, a terminology, whatever. Scream it out. Eggplants. Oh, cool. Eggplants. Let me get one from this side. Cowboys, they go hand in hand. Eggplants, cowboys, let me get one from the middle. Come back. No major corporations. Give me another one. Because they're not cutting me a check, so eggplants, they might sponsor me. I don't know. Uh, let me get one from here. A word. What? What did you just say? What the heck is that? Theocyanade? Is that, am I even pronouncing it right? I'm not? Oh, I'll still use it. Theocyanade. Okay. Eggplants, cowboys, theocyanade. Ladies and gentlemen, let's try this. Let me just see you clap your hands like this. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Yo, yo, yo. My name is MC Jin. I'm live in SD. I told my wife I'm doing a TED Talk. She don't believe me. It's okay while I'm on this mic. I'm just looking in the camera and saying hi to my wife. Even when it's on YouTube, she won't be convinced. But it's okay. I'm going to do this like a real true gent. Now, starting from the right, what can I say? The first word that she thought of today was an eggplant. It's okay. I got it going on. After the TED Talk, we'll get some eggplant parmesan. Now, moving to the left. I'm spitting with joy. I know Indians and I used to play with cowboys. That's the most random and absurd thing I could say. But hey, they go hand in hand every single day. Now, I can barely remember the words you said. It sounded like diocide. That's just off my head. Is it a scientific term or is it something make-believe? I don't even care. The freestyle breathe. This is like oxygen. I need it to exist. I can go on till this beat stop. That's how I exist. I do this every day. It's the normal procedure. If you don't believe me, I just might catch a seizure up on stage because I didn't sleep enough. But it's okay, last night we was partying up I was at Porter Charm and the show was live If you're feeling alright, let me hear you say right Okay, in, in sync, right Right Let's try Say ten talk Say ten talk Make some noise, y'all That was such an interesting moment. I've done many shows, right, over the years. they get very, like, humbled by that. And, you know, I've said all kind of stuff. Ladies, make some noise. Representing Cali, represent New York. Let me hear you say ho. But uh, I don't think it hip-hop really, really, like, felt as live as when you guys were like, Ted Talk. <laughs> Let me hear you say Ted Talk. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. That was pretty spontaneous. So we're off to a good start. Why'd you black out my, uh, my time? It's so much pressure now. I don't know how much I have left. <laughs> you see, that's, that's spontaneous. He was so engrossed by the freestyle rap. Completely abandon your duties. <laughs> OK, I'm on point. It's all right, man. What's your name, sir? Brian. Brian. Now let me do a freestyle about you. Check this out. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he got excited, though. Doesn't happen like that. <laughs> Want me to freestyle about you? You got to like PayPal me at least 20 bucks or something. That's the pro rate for my TED Talk friends here, okay? 
But um, yeah, so let's see, where do we start? Let me first start off by saying how excited I was when I found out that I was invited to come share and that it was going to be happening here in SD. And I was thinking, how can I express that? A picture is worth a thousand words, as they say, and I found the perfect image to let you know how I really feel about being here. Bam. <laughs> now, just for clar clarity, I feel how all four of them feel combined. I just wanted to really drive the point home. Um, so my name is MC Jin, and we're going to go back to this wall because uh, I didn't realize it at first. Like I said, it's just an image I like. But yeah, I'm pretty much going to be taking you on a journey. And this image says journey. It says obstacles. It says wall. It says great. And that is me. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, some of you may recognize me from various places. Uh, maybe for some, you might recognize me from this. My groundbreaking performance, my acting performance as a rapping mechanic in the film classic Too Fast, Too Furious. Now, I know you're probably like, I didn't even know it was him. That's because I was so in character. <laughs> right? By the way, I'm the guy on the left. So this is in case. And um, hate to turn a joyful moment into something so somber, but people have asked, man, what was it like working with Paul? And I have to say, to be honest, it was such a short amount of time, you know, for the time that we got to film that project that I got to interact with not just him, but the rest of the cast and crew. Mind-blowing experience, and this wasn't at all in my mind, but now that the image is up there, I do feel compelled to share. Like, he was just class act in my experience with him. Professional, cool dude, and um, so some of you may remember me from that. Moving on, some of you, I would think majority, maybe, maybe not, might remember me from something like this. A super grainy image. <laughs> it's grainy for a reason. This was about 13 years ago, roughly. Once again, I'm the guy on the right, okay? And this is what we call in the hip hop universe a freestyle battle. So essentially what you guys just saw me do, but with a lot more ferociousness and a lot more aggression. The guy on the left, uh, my opponent, I'm just gonna give you an excerpt of what he said to me. Um, I know why your eyes are chinky, cause you keep staring at my pinky. You can laugh and cheer, I mean, yeah. That's the whole premise of a rap battle, right? Attack your opponent. So um, that was him. And me, I said something along the lines of, you want to say I'm Chinese? Here's a reminder. Check your Tims. They probably say made in China. What? All right. Look at me basking in my own glory. <laughs> I'm like, you heard the way I said, what? And you guys are just like, they invited this guy? They're like, OK. Yes, they invited me. You're going to have to deal with it. So moving along from that, this is actually a great this is where I really wanted to start this journey. They asked me, what would you like to share about? We're talking about the search, in search of, in search of. And um, the, the, the theme or the title that we actually end up going with and I shared with them is in search of the Chinese kid who reps that you guys have been exposed to in the last six minutes or so. But once upon a time, before there was a Chinese kid who reps, there was this young man right here in the middle, scooter riding, bright neon shirt wearing. Uh, that's my mother and father kind of flanking me. And uh, this is where I grew up, inside that little Chinese restaurant that you see behind us. That was the first one. Uh, we opened a few, actually, but I have to say not necessarily successfully. Um, open one, close another one, open one, close another one. So um, for what my mom and dad had in terms of passion, just that good old-fashioned hard work and grit, uh, maybe what they lacked was, you know, business acumen. And I say that lovingly, because I, I, I know for a fact it wasn't necessarily a lack of hard work or work ethic or anything of that nature. So they instilled a lot of that in me. But I must say, you might see a jolly, happy-looking little boy there, but uh, those years that I was trapped in that restaurant, and I use the word trapped because that's how I felt. All my friends are going out to the park, playing basketball, doing whatever they love, and here I am at the restaurant. And then when I was old enough, naturally, you know, I had to help in. So at some point in the mid-90s, late-90s, if you ever called a Chinese restaurant and ordered some fried rice and chicken wings, I'd probably answer the phone. If you lived in Miami, of course. This was in Miami. And that is the whole premise, I think, now of why and how I fell in love with hip-hop. Because it was around this same era that, I mean, I just got exposed to it. You know, I'm watching TV like everybody else. I'm listening to the radio like everybody else. Remember seeing LL Cool J the first time. You know, mama said, knock you out. I was like, yo, that resonates with me. She always wants to knock me out. <laughs> right? And um, it just made such a 
lasting impact on me, as you can see. Here we are now, many, many decades later. Well, about two decades later. But um, I want to go back to this, this image right here of the journey. So when I, you know, kind of realized that I had this passion for hip hop, um, I just took the appropriate steps that I thought were appropriate. So at the time, you know, pre-YouTube, pre-Twitter, pre-social media as a whole, I, I hit the ground running. So, you know, um, by the time I was 16 or so, 16, 17 years old, I knew that this is what I wanted to pursue. So I went to the open mics, I did demo tapes, and um, one thing I did a lot of was battling, like what I showed you earlier. And that was my way of, like, earning stripes, right? But unfortunately, things just, you know, it, it was a slow crawl. And I think that's the whole purpose, right? And um, at the same time, my personal world, you know, in terms of my family, the restaurant, school, all these things were kind of just colliding with each other. And I guess a milestone moment, uh, although it was a relatively negative milestone moment, was after I graduated high school, um, around the time that 9-11 happened, actually, my uh, family lost their final restaurant, the third one. And with that, even in more epic proportions, we also lost our home. So this is something very vivid to me, showing up at home and um, seeing that tape across the door, violators, you know, uh, 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 trespassers will be violated and, and so forth. And I'm like, I have a key though, All right? But that key means nothing when that tape is across the door. So because of those circumstances, my mom and dad decided to move to New York. And that's where um, I ended up going. Uh, for family reasons, but also to further pursue my rap career. And uh, yeah, the month after 9-11 is when I moved to um, New York, uh, October, and uh, hit the ground running, and then ended up doing more rap battles, which ultimately landed me a record deal with Rough Riders. You know, they mentioned it earlier. Uh, label mates. Here I am with DMX, Eve. Mind-blowing to me, because I grew up a huge Rough Rider fan, still am to this day, and um, it, it was... I think this is a key point of my journey. I don't think a lot of these, you know, what can be perceived as spontaneous, or maybe you might be like, well, you kind of have been aspiring for these things for so long, Zen. It's not necessarily spontaneous. But I think that the, the element that I failed to really process was that as these things were happening, the significance of them. So that's an interesting thing to share. Like, I don't know, maybe it's not about dwelling on the significance of it. Maybe it is kind of just continuing to push forward. And that culminated into this. My first album ever. This was in 2004. No, that's not my yearbook picture. It would have been cool if it was, though. Most likely to, I, don't, I can't even dare to say most likely to what, but uh, that is the cover of my first album. Uh, came out in 2004, so a little over a decade ago. And this is really an indication of just kind of, man, all the peaks and valleys, highs and lows of life. And for me, very vivid highs and lows. Here I am watching my baby, my album come out, and the same time that it was such a joyful moment, this is actually when it all started crashing down. And simply because I could elaborate about it, but it'd probably take 10 TED Talks, so I'll condense it. The expectations, the hype, the bar was set higher than probably realistically you know, uh, approachable. And the thing I always like to stress now is I own up to it more than anything. Sometimes people tell me, yo, Jin, man, you kind of got dealt a, you know, you got dealt a bad hand, man. Like, you're the first Asian rapper, this, that, and the third. You know, the label didn't promote you. And I'm like, no. I refuse to accept or allow any of those feelings to, to be harbored inside me. Because I've realized, as the years have gone by, the only way I even was able to find peace or resolve in any manner was when I looked in the mirror and said, dude, you, you were kind of, you know, you were the commander of the ship. You had all these kind of people assisting you, giving you opportunities, but at no point did anybody ever say you should, must, you know, have to do that. So every decision I, I made was made from an internal place. And the reality is when this album came out, because it didn't live up to any expectations, the same people that were championing me were, this, you know, were quick to just be like, oh man, dang, what happened? Like, he's making us look bad. Whether it is the Asian community or whether it's just the general public, you know, who felt like, Man, he was supposed to be the next big thing, right? And at one point, it seemed that way. And um, this happened. So fast forward a little bit. This was 2004. In 2008, the dust was really starting to settle, and I was really starting to see the reality of my situation. I had continued to do music, but independently. So I went from having an album on a major label to basically you know, posting on my MySpace page, hey, if you want to buy my album, PayPal me 10 bucks. Very drastically different but I'm so glad I did it because of the two experiences, I, I got a lot out of it. 
um, you know, there's a certain rewarding, fulfilling feeling when someone PayPal's you 10 bucks and you go to the post office and mail them your album. Um, but still, the momentum was without a doubt slowing down. And uh, in 2008, to be honest, I was kind of on the verge of really stepping away from it all and not out of choice, but out of necessity, I guess. Just, yo, this is not panning out how I saw. Then I went to Hong Kong. I thought it was going to be for a couple months, ended up staying for four years. And um, in those four years is where I think I really, really grew in every way possible. First and foremost, as an artist. Secondly, as a human being, right? So um, now we can go to this slide. This is a great indication of where my mindset was at during that time. What you are looking at is me watching myself on TV wearing the outfit that I had on when I was on TV. <laughs> If there's anything that says self-centered, ego-driven, I'm the man, it's this picture. And I'm not even looking at the TV, I'm looking back at you guys. So it's, it's a lot of conflict and, and internal kind of things that need to be resolved with this young man here. But this was about 13, 14 years ago roughly, and um, here's another contrast moment. This one, you don't really see my face, I'm not looking back at you. The little, bu the little buddy of mine that I'm holding his hand, he's not looking back at you because we're focused on going to watch Jeremy Lin play the Knicks. Not for the Knicks, but play the Knicks because he was on the Lakers already. This was uh, recently. This was my son's first basketball game. And um, yeah, I think these two images are great in contrast. Where one, I'm looking back. This is a spontaneous thing. I didn't even process this till I, I'm looking at them back to back right now. One, I'm looking back. The other, I'm looking forward. That's kind of the point and maybe the, I suppose, po uh, point that I would like to drive home, you know, the, the, the importance of looking forward. And I'll end with one thing right here. A young man named David Fung wrote an article about the top 10 Asian rappers of all time. Very subjective. It's the opinion of one guy. But of all the articles that I've ever read about myself or writings about myself, this single statement right here, to date, as of right now, probably is the one that has stuck with me the most in terms of challenging me, stinging me, pulling me down to earth, encouraging me, all these various things. And I'll, I'll read it to you guys, even though I know you guys can read. Jin is the single most well-known, written about, revered, disrespected, loved, and hated Asian American rapper ever. Wowzers, like so much in there. Probably more for me than anyone else here because it's, 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 it's a very intriguing and fascinating thing to watch your whole journey be summed up in one sentence, I suppose. But uh, thank you guys very much. My name is MC Jin, and I just encourage you guys to keep pushing forward. And there is a Chinese kid that raps in each one of you. <laughs> Find him. Peace, y'all.